Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the general structure of skeletal muscles, the ultrastructure of skeletal muscles, and then we'll finish with a summary. So the skeletal muscle has a kind of hierarchical structure. The skeletal muscle cell is made up of lots and lots of bundles running along the cells called myofibrils, and in turn those are made up of units called sarcomeres. So in a previous video we discussed how one single muscle cell, or a muscle fibre, is a long cell made up of several nuclei and shared cytoplasm, and it has these structures inside of it running along its length, and each one of these are known as a myofibril. And inside one myofibril, if we unravel that, we have these repeating units along its length, which are known as a sarcomere, and this is the unit of contraction. Each of those sarcomeres is made up of two different types of proteins, a protein called actin and myosin. The actin protein looks like some beads on a string wound around each other. So we've got this kind of double chain of these actin proteins all joined up into a long chain. The other protein is myosin, which looks very similar to actin in that it's a long filamentous kind of protein, but it has this bulbous head structure on one end. So the two proteins found inside the sarcomere. So bearing that in mind, let's talk about the ultrastructure of the skeletal muscles. When we look at a myofibril under an electron microscope, they have this stripy patterned appearance when we look at it. So here's an electron microscope image of part of a myofibril, and you can see these repeating units of kind of bands and stripes, and each one of these is known as a sarcomere. So one myofibril is going to have lots of sarcomeres along its length, and therefore a muscle cell has lots and lots of sarcomeres in its cell. And the pattern is very distinctive, and we'll talk about how the different proteins of actin and myosin make up these patterns. The reason they look like this is because they have these alternating lighter and darker coloured bands, and they're called the I, or isotropic light band, and the A, anisotropic or dark bands. So here's a sarcomere, drawn as a diagram. The lighter bands are lighter in colour, and they refer to the certain area which is lighter because it's less dense. So this would be an I band. And then the dark band is where it looks darker in the image, which is called the A band. So I stands for isotropic, for light, and A stands for anisotropic, for darker. And then on the other side, we have the kind of mirror image. This is another I band. And then essentially it just repeats itself over and over again. The lighter regions, which we've called the I bands, are where there is only thin actin proteins present, or actin filaments. So we said an I band was this lighter area here, and inside the I band we see only actin. So remember there's two proteins, there's actin and myosin, but there's no myosin inside the I band. So the proteins running along in these particular orders are only actin. However, the darker regions, which are called the A bands, are where there's both actin and myosin filaments. So if this was the I band before, as we move along, we can now see that now there is this myosin protein in red, and we call this area the A band. So we have this red protein, which is the myosin, and we also have lighter proteins, which are the actin. And the mixture of both of them make the whole area of the A band darker than the I band. And then here would be another a I band. If you look in the center of an A band, there's a lighter zone called the H zone, where there's only myosin. So just to recap again, we've got the I band, which is very light because there's only actin. And then we have the darker band, which is called the A band, which has mixtures of myosin and actin. But then when you look in the middle of the A band, running down here, we have only myosin. So this is called the H zone. So make sure you learn which letter corresponds with which proteins. At the centre of the I band, there is a line called the Z line. So go back to the I band, which is the lighter coloured band, which is either side of the A band. And although it's mainly made of actin, we've got this line running down here, covered by this black line area. And this line is called a Z line. Sometimes it's called a Z disc. So summing all this up, the distance between adjacent Z lines makes one repeating unit of a myofibril which is a sarcomere. So essentially from one Z line all the way to the next Z line, the combination of the I bands, the A bands and the H zone makes up one whole sarcomere. And then of course from this Z line to the next one there'll be another sarcomere and another one and another one. 
and that's what the myofibril is made of, lots and lots of lined up sarcomeres. So in summary, we can see that sarcomeres are comprised of several distinct regions. So this lines up the image with the diagram we've been looking at. The purple region is the I band, which contains only actin, and you can see that either side it's actually lighter because there's only actin there. The darker part is the A band, which is dark because it has myosin and actin, here and here. Myosin and actin, myosin and actin. And that lighter area, the orange area within the A band, is the H zone. And inside the I bands, denoted by the green line, is the Z line, or the Z disc. And then this is one sarcomere, therefore, between Z line to Z line. The next sarcomere would be the next one, either side. So hopefully that gives you a general structure of what the sarcomere is. These units which control the contraction of the muscle as they all work together and in sync. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.